Hi everybody, it's Paul Harris with Global Recruiters of Blackhawk here in sunny California. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. So you guys, last week I went to a great, great show uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area, 5G Forum. Two full days, incredibly cool stuff. And so the next cool, uh, ne next few minutes, I'm going to do my best to just give you a download of what happened. My goal is to, in case you weren't able to make it, you know, just make sure you felt like you were there. So let me tell you this. First of all, very, very well connect, uh, very well attended and a huge spectrum of type of people and organizations. So there were, there were people from U.S., China, Japan, South Korea, uh, France, Denmark, um, Germany, Middle East, uh, India, etc. There were people from AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile. There were people from um, Telenor, which is uh, Denmark, uh, Orange, which is France, Intel, Cisco, Qualcomm, Huawei, Ford, Toyota, Kia, Google, I mean, ev everyone was there. And it was full, uh, the room was full of a bunch of incredibly smart people. And then there was me, I don't know what I was doing there. But anyways, um, some incredibly smart engineers that are really into this 5G technology. I mean, try to imagine my brain in the front, in the front row with the chief scientist for wireless tele uh, technologies for China Telecom talking about bits per second per megahertz and you know millimeter weave, uh, wave technology and stuff like that. I thought my head was going to blow up. But anyways, bunch of very, very smart people, but I learned a lot of stuff. I was able to hang in and I'm going to do my best to kind of give you the, the meaty points from, from those two days here in the next couple minutes. So before we get into 5G, let's talk about a little bit of a, you know, kind of review of where we're at today with 4G. So uh, 4G, there's 381 4G LTE networks in the world in about 123 different countries. LTE penetration, a little bit above 20%. By 2020, it's supposed to be about 70%. And uh, CAGR, which is compounded annual growth rate, is expected to be about uh, 57% over the next 10 years. Um, so from uh, you know, difference between Gs, right? There's usually about 10 years between a, a G, right? A 2G or a 3G or 3G or 4G. And um, the operators have been working on 5G since Q4 of 2012. So, you know, we're hearing about it a lot lately now. But uh, these engineers and people in this room have been working on it since Q4 of 2012. So what is, what is uh, 5G? What's it, what the heck does it mean to us? Why should we care, right? So, and when's it coming? So when it's coming, you know this, right? We've all heard this. I think everybody's settled in, right? 2020 is when it's supposed to be here. It's supposed to be much, much faster speeds and a lot more appropriate for different um, use cases, use cases that eat up a bunch of bandwidth, right? Like uh, Internet of Things, connected car, hologram videos, etc. Anything where a lot of bandwidth is needed. So that's what it's going to do. What else is it going to do from a technological perspective? So decreased latency, that's very, very important in our world. In our world. Uh, increased um, density, capacity, spectral efficiency, uh, scalability, reliability, reduced costs, etc. And then there's a lot of talk about the, you know, above and below six meg, uh, six gigahertz. So 5G is going to be above six gig gigahertz, and there's a lot of talk about that. So let's get to, to some of the speakers. So um, the first, the morning session of the first day was led by a gentleman named Chris Pearson, who's actually the president of the 4G Americas. And he read a he ran a keynote panel, very very cool stuff with some very very smart people. Uh, the the woman I was talking about from China Telecom, or Dr. Ch, uh, Chi Lin Yi, she did a great great job, man. She really really knows what she's talking about. And they uh, so China Telecom has the largest uh, uh, 4G network in the world, 800,000 um, base stations and 125 million subscribers. Right, that's that's that's. Very, very cool stuff. She did a great job. Talked about uh, dark fiber in, in Japan a little bit easier uh, to get than, than maybe in the U.S. She, you know, here we talk about IoT, right? Internet of Things. She was talking about IOE, which is in their world is Internet of Everything. So it, we're Internet of Things. She's talking, oh, no, no, it's going to be Internet of Everything. So it's going to be interesting to see which one of those kind of acronyms uh, plays out as time goes by. She also, also talks about something that they do in Japan called Smart Tile. It's, it's one word with, a, with one T in the middle, Smart Tile. And it's basically an invisible base station that they put on buildings or they hide them within signs. And she had pictures of these signs. It looks like a sign that you see every day, but, it, but it's got one of these Smart Tiles in it. So very, very cool stuff. Great, great speech done by her. 
from Sprint was a guy named Ron Marquardt, who's a VP of technology at Sprint. He did a phenomenal job as well, talking about just basically how you know wildly successful 4G LTE has been with the prol proliferation of you know smartphones and tablets and etc. And then how about and we've heard this before that you know 5G will not replace uh, 4G. You know, on day one it's 4G, and on day two it's 5G. It's going to be kind of put in and kind of will coexist along with uh, with 4G for a while and work in partnership with it, um, just like we've done from 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, etc. Everything other than, as he pointed out, which is very we're very correct, not 1G to 2G because that was analog to digital, so you couldn't do that. But in general, it's not going to be an overnight change. It's going to kind of phase in. Um, uh, Mark McDermott, so he runs the uh, engineering department for T-Mobile. Uh, once again, he did a phenomenal job as well. He always does when I see him speak. And uh, he talked about how T-Mobile uh, is very much focused and has been on, on LTA, uh, LTEA and how small cells are a key piece of LTEA. So he did a great job as well. Uh, from Ericsson, a guy named Eric Ikeden, and I actually saw him speak uh, as well as uh, we, um, a couple days before at um, the Connected Car event, but he talked about SDN and NFV, which is not surprising at all. But he also talked about MTC, right? Are you with me? You're not with me? I wasn't with me on that one. Uh, we talk about M to M, right? Machine to machine. MTC is mas machine type communication, and there was a lot of talk about MTC versus uh, uh, M, M to M. I think they're basically the same thing as what I picked up. But he talked about that. Talked about open platform uh, with with the five G and how the current latency is about ten milliseconds, and with five G they're hoping to get to uh, one to two milliseconds. Very cool stuff. And then talk about the changes that are being done to the RAN with five G are going to mean some changes to the core as well. Very good speech. Um, then they had a speaker from uh, SK Telecom in South Korea, and they were talking about the fact that they are number one globally with LTE penetration at 64%, where we're only third place in, in, at about 40%, and talked about how 5G is going to be uh, virtualized, it's going to be programmable, it's going to be intelligent, it's going to have open source software, but with COTS, right? Commercial off the shelf uh, hardware, and then a cloud RAN and a cloud core. Okay, so very interesting speech done by him. There was a gentleman named uh, uh, Fujio Watanabe from Docomo. He talked about massive MIMO. Right? MIMO is, uh, you know, what is it now? <laughs> Come on, Paul, you can do it. Uh, multiple input, multiple outputs. So it basically, so massive MIMO extends the cell range, basically, what that whole speech is very more, much more technologically uh, advanced when he was telling it than what I am, but it basically extends the cell range. Talked about um, macro-assisted cells, which is basically you know phantom cells and higher frequency bands. Talked about a big data and the use for you know how the the analysis to uh, kind of analyze traffic patterns, etc. So that was very cool. There was a gentleman from Qualcomm named Sanjeev who talked about the the, the cost reductions the 5G is going to bring us not only in operations but in deployment of the system. So that is in my world is very very important. Um, and, that, and then he talked about, and this one kind of hit me as well, 4G was designed in 2003 and 2004, remember, 10 years between uh, Gs. So when they were designing 4G back in 2003 and 2004, there was no iPhone. Right, so the iPhone, as we you know, we know, kind of changed our world, and so these engineers have constantly had to kind of upgrade technology and software, etc., to make it work with the 4G system of today with with the iPhone. Then he talked about how 5G will be phased in over two things: number one, time, of course, and 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 via geogra uh, geographically as well. So obviously, the more urban, dense areas will be. Um, Will be will be phased in first. Very cool. Um, a guy named uh, uh, Javen Afrenian. I hope I got that name. So he's from. You guys heard me talk about uh, NGMN before. So the Next Generation Mobile Network Alliance. I've talked to them before on these type of things. So he talked about the white paper. I've talked about the white paper on on the on the uh, different. Uh, events that I've gone to uh, where um, MGNM was on there as well. So we talked about the white paper, which is basically the um, outlining the standards for 5G moving forward. Uh, there was a speaker here from the San Francisco Bay Area from AT&T, Faraz Shafiq. He did a great job talk about um, you know 5G driving the need for much more increased big data and how to make big data actionable and how big data can be used with a uh, connected car. Right, he cited that 93% of all vehicle accidents, uh, fatal accidents. Accidents are are caused by humans, and how we can maybe decrease that. 
and then talked about the, the virtual reality and kind of uh, self-driving cars as well. A gentleman from Verizon, um, Arda Aksu, he talked about license versus unlicensed versus shared spectrum. He talked in, not only he, but talk, others talked about RAT. So I, in my world, I, we hear about RAN a lot, right? Radio Access uh, Network. There's a lot of talk during the day about RAT, which is radio access technology. So what is it? Is it 3G? Is it 5G? Is it, uh, you know, whatever. So TDMA or whatever. Um, so the RAT is what that stands for. And then he talked about um, mission critical things. And so mission critical, when you hear that word, basi word, basically what you need to think about is anything that needs incredibly low latency and incredibly high reliability. That's what mission critical means. I'm almost done, you guys. So uh, a gentleman, really, what a great guy he was, Medat El Husseini. From, he's from the Middle East, but he's in charge of Bangladesh and building out their system. He was in a whole different world from everybody else that was on there, and that is that he's saying, you know, guys, we're just trying to make 3G happen. We're just trying to get um, these emerging markets to have basic services, and our goal, forget, you know, Internet of Things, we're just trying to connect people versus, you know, until we, you know, get, we got to get that done before we talk about connecting things. So it was interesting. Uh, his world was so different from our world. It was very, very interesting. Um, uh, he talks about the... Uh, um, uh, the emerging markets have 15% 3G penetration at this point. So interesting, interesting. A couple things, you guys, before I'm done, just miscellaneous stuff. So um, how SDN NFE will, you know, we can't wait. You know, obviously SDN NFE is moving forward with 4G. We can't wait till 5G. Uh, there's talk about a term called network slicing, which is, I understand, basically dedicating, uh, you know, or allocating spectrum to certain uh, users, or more importantly, I guess maybe more appropriately, you know, more u different use cases. That's uh, network slicing. And then there was some talk about how things will not, some things that will not change, right? So if you're in site acquisition or, uh, you know, you're doing leasing or backhaul, et cetera. So, you know, getting a, a site acquisition for a 4G site versus a 5G site, who cares? You know, it doesn't matter. And so um, it's, it's going to be the same. So some things are going to stay the same. And then kind of at the end of the day, one of the guys, the speakers, you know, I think we all enjoy when he gets up there because he looks like he has is having a good time. So Ian Gillett from IGR, he got up there. He did a great, uh, great speech. And, and led a, um, a, a breakout panel as well. And one of the things that he said that cracked me up, and it's so so true, which is, um, when is it going to be okay to say 5G? You know, if you roll this out and it's got a little teeny bit bit of something that has a little bit of 5G in it, is it okay to say it's a 5G network now? So anyways, it was a great point made by Ian. And I think the exciting thing about what I love about this industry is we're going to have a front row seat to see what happens uh, as, as 5G gets ready to roll out and who's going to, you know, say they have a 5G system first and etc. So anyways, exciting stuff. Two days, you guys, I know this is a little bit long, but man, I've tried to pack in two days worth of stuff and there's so many great speakers and some that I left out and I apologize. But anyways, hope you uh, were able to get some out of that my next one is super my super bowl at the end of this month is going to be uh, pcia in florida so i will circle back with you after that have a great day everybody and thanks for listening